everybody, how's it going? Corey here from ThemeCo with a quick video on loopers. So in this video, what I wanna do is show you just how easy it is from scratch to set up something like a recent post module on the front end of your website. But before we even dive into that, I wanna to touch a little bit on what exactly is a looper? Well, loopers are just the name we've given to a new feature that's come out in this release cycle, which essentially allows you to access information in your WordPress install and then style it and format it and output it to the front end of your website. So it's what's actually powering things like our post elements in this latest release, as well as if you're a pro user, things like the layout builder, which rely heavily on using loopers to access information and then format post indexes or shops or single page layouts, all sorts of stuff relies on using these loopers. Loopers are set up in two different parts. There is the looper provider, which is the thing that you will enable somewhere to access a certain set of data. And then you'll need to turn on a consumer elsewhere to start using that data and formatting it. You'll see these looper provider and consumer controls by adding an element. And let's just inspect this section for now. And I'll go to my customized control group. And down here at the bottom of the inspector, you'll see looper provider and looper consumer. So any layout element in your install, think sections, rows, columns, things like that, any layout element can be set up as a looper provider or the thing that is giving the data for you to work with. The flip side of that is enabling a looper consumer somewhere within that provider. And you'll see that any layout element and also any element in general can be used as a looper consumer. So let's just dive in here and from scratch create a recent post module to output on our site to see just how easy it is to work with all this. So I'm gonna inspect my section here and just make some changes so maybe we can see it a little easier. Adjust my padding somewhat here. And then I'm going to add one column to my row here. Now for this particular example, I'm thinking of something that might start as like a three column layout on a desktop situation and then go smaller as my viewport gets smaller. So I'll inspect my column. I'm gonna go up to row and I'm just gonna go ahead and set up my layout to use three columns on large and extra large. I'm gonna use two on medium and small and then stay at one here on extra small. Now this one column is filling all available space because it's the only column in my row and I've got my default grow option checked here. And that's fine because it's gonna update once we set up our looper conditions to give us the data that we wanna work with. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually set up my provider. Now I'm actually gonna do this here on my row element. I'll simply go over to customize and turn on my looper provider. And you'll see that by default, the type is set to recent posts, as this is probably the most common thing most people will wanna do when working with these loopers. When you set this up, there's no work for you to do. We're simply just going to provide you with the WordPress query you already need to get going. The next control is our count, which by default is pulling through the post per page settings in your WordPress install. Now, typically that setting is used for your blog page, and it might be a higher number than what you're looking for here. So we typically recommend that you set this to custom and then set up how many items you wanna pull through for this provider. Remember that every time we're using a looper provider, we're setting up a new WordPress query. So this is where we recommend specifying only the items you'll need to work with later on so that you keep that information as small as possible. So for now, I'm just gonna set this up as six. So now that we've set up a provider on our row, we need to start consuming that data at a child level. Now as a quick side note, you can actually use a provider and consumer at the same level if you'd like to, to keep things a little more straightforward. But I know for this layout, I'm gonna want my posts to be laid out horizontally and kind of wrapped to new lines. So that's why I'm going to consume this data on the column. You'll also notice here that when I hover over this row, the observer has turned red. Now this is just to notify you to the fact that you are setting up a new provider, which means that you're gonna be using a specialized WordPress query and you're accessing a different set of data for those elements within. So now that we've got our provider going, let's inspect our column. I'm gonna to go to customize and turn on its looper consumer. 
Now you'll notice when we did this, now it's jumped over to be a one third layout. And that's because there are actually some virtualized elements being output here now, which you'll see in just a moment. I'm setting this consumer to all, which means it should output all of the items given by the provider. And if you'll remember from our row, we are providing six recent post items for us to work with. So we will ultimately see six items once we start styling this and formatting it a little bit. So now let's do something very simple. I'm thinking maybe a featured image up top and then a title down below. So I'm gonna open my elements library and we could do something like search for image and drag that in. And then you'll see once I drag that image in, we've got these five other repeated items here. Now remember these are the kind of virtualized repeated elements that are created by the looper. So anything you do in your consumer is going to be repeated across all of the items that you've set up from the provider. So we want to output a featured image. This is going to output a featured image for every post that we work with here. You'll see how this works in just a little bit here. Now, as I was mentioning, we could add an image element and then go down here to our image control, click on dynamic content and add our featured image. But there's another thing we can do as well. We've provided a lot of quick start elements for you to work with when creating these loopers in your design. So if you search for something like featured image, you'll see under this category of dynamic, we've effectively got just a basic image element that already has that featured image applied for you as dynamic content. And you can see right there just how easy it is to get our featured image output in the row that we're working with. All right, so next, let's say that we wanna output our title. I'm gonna open my elements library. And again, we could search for something like a headline and drag that in, or we can use one of these dynamic elements, which in this case, I'm going to use the title. That's WordPress's nomenclature for, you know, anything that is the title on an element. And we're gonna output it here. Now you'll see it's got a little bit of styling. It's kind of intended for a single page layout, but we can simply bring that font size down a little bit and we're good to go. Now you'll notice what's happening here is that on each of these elements, my image is outputting the featured image from that post. My title is outputting the title from that post. And the way that's working again is with our dynamic content tags that we're working. So when I dragged in that element that was called the title, all it really did was had a little bit of a font size adjustment to it. And behind the scenes, it was setting our dynamic content tag to pull through the title. Now again, if you wanted to do this from scratch, you could click on your dynamic content pop-up here. You'll see this little modal appear. And if we search for title, we'll look under post title, add that, and you'll see the output there. Now there's one thing you've probably noticed here, and that is that we have a post here in our group of six that doesn't have a featured image. And obviously we don't wanna output a broken image to the front end of our website. And that is where a really cool new feature that we've added in, element conditions, comes into play. You can click on any element. I'm gonna click on my featured image here. Go to customize and go to this conditions control. And we can add a condition that this element has to meet for it to be output into our markup. So for example, if our post does not have a featured image, we wouldn't want that broken image to be output. So let's add a condition here. I'm gonna search for featured image. And you'll see right here that our rule is, if a featured image is set, then we should output the image. And you'll see now that we've got five images for our posts that have a featured image. And then our one without a featured image just outputs the title. So this is great, it allows you to give um, variable markup to your modules that you're working on and just it makes things really flexible for you to work with. So let's finalize this styling just a little bit. I'm gonna say since the image is variable, it may or may not be there, I'm going to inspect my image here, turn on some margin, and then maybe at the bottom give it just a little bit of spacing for my title. Now I didn't put that on the title because if the image isn't there, I don't want this title to be pushed down from being top aligned with the rest of my post. So that's why I've added it to my image. And now really the final thing we need to do is link all of this up. Now, a really cool new feature we've added in this release as well 
is any layout element that you're using, I've inspected my column right now, can update its base tag. So we've got your basic stuff like divs or lists or list items. You can also use a lot of semantic markups such as sections, articles, header, footer, things like that. But you can also turn any layout element into an anchor tag. So if we wrap this column in an anchor tag, that means that we can add a link around all of this content, making this whole item clickable and just um, a much cleaner experience for our users when working with our content. So I've linked my content here, and now I wanna add a link to the post that's inside this looper. So again, I've got my link input. I'll click on the dynamic content pop up here. I'm just gonna search for link and you'll see post permalink. We add that. And now as I hover over this down in the lower left corner of my screen, you'll see that we've got the link to our post all wired up. So I'm just gonna finalize this now with a little bit of styling. Let's say we give our post a background color Maybe we want some padding to space things out a little bit here. I think I preferred one. Do a simple border radius, maybe a box shadow. I'm gonna add my black here. And you'll see that all the changes we're adding to this is being applied to every element at once. So this first element here serves as sort of a model that is used for every element after that. So maybe I want to inspect this image here and give it a slight border radius. And then let's do something really fun here. Let's click on, well actually first, let me adjust this spacing a little bit. Let's click on our post here. I'm gonna go to effects. This is another new feature of this release cycle, the effects module, which we go into in a lot more detail in some other videos on our channel. I'm gonna turn on an interaction effect here and just on hover, I'm gonna have it move up about three pixels. So you'll see when I hover over that item now, it moves up and maybe we want the shadow on that column to get just a little bit darker when we're on hover. So I will just adjust this a little bit You'll see it moves up, the shadow gets a little darker. So we will save this, hop over to the front end of our site, and you can see that very quickly, we've put together a completely custom recent post setup for our site. We've got really cool interactions, we've got colors changing, we've set up the content how we want, we've got our featured image first, with the title after, and then we've got conditional content. So if we don't have a featured image, we don't have it looking all broken or weird on the front end. And of course, I haven't styled this fully. I've just kind of thrown this together very quickly, but I hope you're seeing just how easy it is to get going with this looper module and just how flexible it is to set up your content in any way you want moving forward.